Welcome back to the greenhouse. I'm Beth Myers Shanai with the Oregon Department of Agriculture's Noxious Weed Control Program, and I'm here to introduce you to a couple of ivies today. Now, pretty much everybody who's been in Western Oregon has seen this one. We call it English ivy. It's also known, uh, depending on its exact type, which is a little hard to tell without um, a plant microscope, um, Atlantic ivy, because we actually do have two separate species, but they both behave very similarly. So this one is the very common ivy that you unfortunately see heavily impacting forested areas in Western Oregon. It climbs trees, it does a lot of damage, it stresses them out, it tops them out, um, and it can be spread by seed from birds eating the berries and moving it around. The other ivy we have is called Cape ivy, or German ivy, and hopefully this is a little less well known to everybody. So both of these are listed noxious weeds on Oregon's state noxious weed list. English ivy is listed as a bee weed. There's quite a bit of it there, and a lot of work is going into habitat restoration areas to get rid of this, to um, restore and protect the trees in those areas and the ground cover because this ivy will creep along the ground and prevent any other kinds of plants from getting started once it gets started. This cape ivy is actually not very closely related at all to English ivy. It actually has uh, yellow flowers similar to tansy ragwort, if you're familiar with that. It is in the sunflower family, um, and it actually used to be classified in the same genus as tansy ragwort, but it is truly an ivy-like vine. It climbs and it covers. Um, it's a lot more succulent feeling of a stem though than the English ivy. The English ivy gets very woody. This one is actually kind of a brittle and fragile stem, but it can continue to root from any of these little nodes, the little bumps that where the, the leaves and the um, new stems start to grow from. So our naturalized populations of Cape Ivy right now are in uh, Southwest Oregon along the coast and they're being very actively managed. Since this is an A weed, it means it's the highest priority noxious weed to either um, eradicate or completely contain in Oregon. So eradication is underway for Cape Ivy. Unfortunately, we have found some Cape Ivy um, being sold in, in at least one nursery. So it's very likely that this is out in the landscape someplace else or in, um, in an ornamental area anyway. Um, but it would also be able to outgrow and escape pretty easily if somebody had it planted. So we really want to keep an eye out for this one. Um, English Ivy, we have some great resources on ODA's Noxious Weed Program website. If you're um, working on managing English Ivy on your own property, um, really good resources to have there. What some people don't realize is that when English ivy is in its juvenile form, that's more like what we recognize um, this to be, kind of the dark green, three lobes, uh, bright creamy colored veins running down the middle. But once it finally gets enough light, it either goes high enough in the tree or if it's not growing up a tree, it might actually start wrapping around itself to get enough light. And um, then the leaf shape changes completely to just a shiny entire edge leaf with no lobes at all and generally no bright contrasting veins in it as well. So you may have seen that and not even realized it was the same plant. When it gets to that condition, that's when it can flower. It's a very nondescript um, flower. You can, you can see it, but it has no showy color to it. And then almost a purple-like berry forms, which then can be picked up by uh, birds and spread around and, and new ivy locations and infestations can start. Um, Cape ivy is pretty much mostly vegetative spread from our understanding in the, in the couple of places it's growing, um, but it does that very well. It grows very fast and it has more of this, as I mentioned, kind of succulent um, stem to it. And its leaves are um, kind of wider and shinier and a little, a lot more tender. They are not a, a very thick leaf. 
But if you ever uh, see a very unusual vine starting to cover an area and uh, you're curious, it would be great to at least snap a picture of this. Since this is an A-listed weed, we want to report every known location of it in Oregon. And you can report it at 1-866-INVADER or you can log on to the Oregon Invasive Species Hotline website. That's OregonInvasivesHotline.org. And then you'll, you're able to put a pin on a map where you found it. Also post some pictures and um, as much of a description as you can. And uh, we'll have um, noxious weed staff all over the state actually alerted. But if it's an A-weed especially, I'll, I'll be checking in on every one of these because we want to stop this plant before it gets started any more than it already is in Oregon. For English ivy, it's not necessary to report it, but if you do want some good tips on controlling it, again, head to our website or call your local soil and water conservation district and find out if they have any habitat restoration programs going in your area that you might be able to join up in. Thank you for showing up today and I'll see you next time at the greenhouse. Bye-bye.